Hey everyone, back to Fortigate Certificate and in this part 3 we will look at hash functions. Now what is a hash function? A hash function is a mathematical function that takes any input and produces a hash value. Now the hash value is always in a fixed size according to the hash function that was used. The hash value is also called a digest and it should be impossible to produce the same value for two different inputs. So the function is actually collusion free. Now a hash function must be quick. It has to produce the hash value very fast and a slight change on the input should change the entire hash value completely. So even if we have a one gigabyte file full of text and we change a comma in one of the sentences, the hash value will change completely. So we have the input, we have the hash function, and we have the digest, the hash value. Now, when do we use it? We use it for integrity. Whenever we send a file, it can be just about any file, and we want to check its integrity, that no one touched it, no one tampered with the bitstream. We make a hash value out of the file, and then on the other side, we compare the same file using the same hash function. If the two hash values are the same, then no one tampered with the file. If the hash value changes, then someone probably touched the file. There are dozens of hash functions that are used just about anywhere. When a web server stores uh, passwords in its database, they are being hashed. They are being hashed using different hash functions such as the SHA-256 or the SHA-512. To make the hash stronger, we also use what is known as a SALT. We generate a random numbers to be added to the password itself and thus the uh, hash value will be much more difficult to guess. Now, now the term guessing is the right term since hashes are in no way an encryption technique. They are not used for encryption. They are only a mathematical function, a one-way mathematical function that takes an input turns it into another value and there's no way back. They are not reversible. All right, so enough, enough with that. Let's move over to OpenSSL. Let's uh, reproduce some hashes out of different inputs. And at the end, that will probably be part four of the series we will recap what we have learned uh, by now that is symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption and hash functions and we will look at certificate, a digital certificate and understand how it all matches. All right, so we'll use OpenSSL but let's start out by using the echo command and let's write down some text. I have a secret message. All right, now let's grab it into OpenSSL and let's use uh, MD5. MD5 is a hash function that produces a 128 bit value. Now that's the uh, hash uh, value of that text. Now if I'll use the same if I'll use the same text, but I'll add 
I'll change the E to an A. You'll see that I get another hash value, completely different hash value. Let's go back to the same uh, text and it will produce the same hash value as before. Now, if we will use the SHA-256 hash function, you can see that we actually get the output as a 256-bit value. It is much stronger than MD5. We can also do it using the 512-bit, which produces stronger hash value. Now, how does it all have to do with digital certificate and digital signatures? We will look at it in our next video, which will be the last part of the series. But let's just look out at a digital certificate. And as you can see, we have the public key, which is the asymmetric encryption. We also have a signature algorithm, which is the hash function, as we just spoke about. And in part four, we will see how it all mixes out with the symmetric encryption to make sure that we have confidentiality, authenticity, and integrity.